Hey guys, and welcome back to the Blaze Podcast. It's Ed Kimberley and Stu Coles, as always. And our guest on this edition is Johnny Curran. Hey, Johnny, how you doing? Good to see you. Good, good. Thanks for having me. Should be fun. Uh, again, I, we spoke to Evan a couple of days ago, and I realized it is a while since I'd spoken to him. And it's been a while since we've spoken to you too. Like, I don't think we've actually caught up since, uh, since the season started proper. Um, so we'll ask you some stuff, I guess, about this year. But I, I kind of want to know about last year too, because, you know, you were one of the guys that was able to find a team. You played in, uh, played in Knoxville mostly with a, a little stint up in Wichita there. Um, yeah. we, that would have been your second year pro, right? So for you, how, how important was it to, to find a ride last year? Oh, you know what? Um, I think uh, at the start of the year, I, I figured it was probably going to be a smoother ride than it was. But looking back at it now, it was it was massive to get the 20, 30 games, whatever it was uh, in. And you kind of uh, until the season's done, you don't realize how lucky you were to be one of the guys that were that was like had a chance to play. So, yeah, very happy that I uh, had that opportunity. So Knoxville, right? So Knoxville is Tennessee, correct me if I'm yeah. wrong, right? Yes. And the the atmosphere at the uh, the Preds games is kind of nuts, like because Tennessee is not really a traditional hockey market, right? Obviously, it's known as, as music mainly. Um, yeah. Did that kind of translate down to Knoxville at all? It did. Yeah, it did. They uh, they love it there. Um, unfortunately, they had the COVID rules there as well, so we were at uh-huh. we were capped at fifty percent capacity. But uh, during a normal year, Knoxville sells out like 5,000 strong, like every night oh, wow. at their games. They're, uh, I talked to the owner a couple of times and they're, they're asked to go play in the East Coast like every year. And they just, they're, they're fine playing in the, in the SP. <laughs> they, they like it there. Some teams are like that though, right? Uh, back in the day, um, uh, when the, uh, the, there was the English Premier League, which was below yeah. the Elite League, Guildford were that team. Like every yeah. year, it was like, all right, Guildford, you're going to complain in the Elite League this year? No, 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 we're good. And then uh, yeah, that yeah. folded and they made the jump. Yeah, for, from a business standpoint, it's actually pretty smart. Like, if you're getting 5,000 people at a lower level with a lower salary cap, why would you go play in a league where you have to travel way more and pay players way more? It's just, it's it's smart. Yeah. Are, they, are they a successful team at that level? You have to forgive me. I, I don't know a lot about the SPHL. East Coast I, and above, I'm afraid. <laughs> Honestly, I, I, I knew nothing uh, going in there, but I think they're one of the founding teams of that league. Sure. Um, it's, it's so hard to keep up with North American minors because they're, they have the central, the I, the, like they had like a million leagues. So I'm sure they've played in a couple leagues through their time. But yeah, I think they're one of the, the first couple to, to play in the SP or to start it. Fair enough. And yeah. I guess from, from what I know about the league, it, it kind of gets a bit of a bad rep at times. What was, it, what was it like for you playing there uh, last year? Uh, yeah, you know what? I didn't, I, hopefully they don't hear too much of this, but uh, I <laughs> did not, I went down there. You don't, it's not like, you don't, it's, you don't really want to go play in the SP. I don't think, I think it's, uh, it's kind of looked down upon and looking at it now, I had an absolute blast. Um, there was, I don't know how many teams are usually in there, but there were five that that year. So the hockey was actually really good hockey Um, played with a couple guys from this league that were there last year. And uh, yeah, it was just a really good experience, but um, looking back at it now, I think uh, I might've not rushed over to England knowing how much fun the SP could have been if the coast didn't work out (laughs) because it's a, it's a fun league, but um, no, it's, it was a good experience and it was obviously it wasn't planned, but I'm, I'm happy I did it. Yeah, and there's a couple of names that you mentioned there did really well. I think he played with Benson, who's in Fife now. He, he led the team in scoring. And, yeah. and Matthew was a, a big-time vet. You know, he's a legend in <laughs> Sheffield. And you, uh, I, think, I think you guys scored the same amount of points, right? So that's, a, that's a pretty good milestone. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it was, um, we kind of crossed paths, uh, like, before the year started. Um, I was, I was going to fly down there, and then I don't know what happened. I decided to drive. And then the sure. coach got wind that I was driving, and he uh, – he got Wazi to drive from like Northern Quebec down to Niagara Falls. And then we drove down to Tennessee together. So How long I, drive I, was that? that was 11 hours. So yeah, I, I just met the guy and then you get in the car for 11 hours and go, go do the States together. So it was, it was pretty fun. And at the end of the year, um, but we put his Harley on the back of my truck and drove down to Florida together too. So I, I actually <laughs> had a, a really good year with him. He was a, he's a really good guy. Um, yeah. Really happy that happened. I bet he had some stories from uh, for you from his uh, time in Sheffield and whatnot. Yeah, yeah, he, he's played a long time. You know, it, um, it was really cool to see his life down in Florida a bit too. He's got his family there, and he was the captain down there when they yeah. uh, 
won the Kelly cup and everything. So he, he he's a really humble guy though. He's, he's not going to tell you too many stories that uh, are too crazy. He's just a yeah, easy going guy. Geez, you want to go on an 11 hour car ride to have at least some good tales for you. <laughs> <laughs> well, I was going to say now, yeah, now that, uh, now that we're closer, I'm sure he probably said I like, I didn't shut up or something because I just talked the whole time, but he, uh, he put up with it. <laughs> Well, if I ever uh, if I ever bump into him, I'll ask him about that car ride, Johnny. How about that? <laughs> yeah, sounds good. Stu? Yeah, and I guess like you, you said, how much fun you had playing in the like the SP. I mean, yeah. uh, uh, but the plan was always to come back to the Blaze after your your first year, and then pandemic kind of hit. When the opportunities arose to come back for this season, was it a no brainer? Like, what were you? What was your thoughts there? Oh uh, yeah, I think. I think uh, it was always going to be the plan to come back. I originally planned to come back here without the pandemic for a year or two. And then that obviously didn't work out, but I, I won't lie to you. The playing in the States again was a, it was a treat. So I, I think that kind of uh, got my mind spinning a bit to go maybe play in the coast for a year or two and see how my luck would be there. But you know what? It just, uh, I ended up missing a lot of the guys here, missing Coventry. And it's a, it's a great place to play and you, you know what you're going to get there. Right. Cause uh, or here, um, it's a, it's a big turnoff in North America when you end up playing for a couple teams in a year. It's ends up being more of a, a traveling experience than a hockey one. So I think uh, I was just excited to come play with the same squad again. And you, you say that you know what you're going to get here, but you've, you've come over and you've <laughs> yeah. probably had um, more, you know, certainly if we talk about on the ice, um, more minutes, you know, a bigger role on the team that you than you'd had the previous year. So, how have you kind of how's that been for you personally? Um, it's been good. You know, what I think uh, when I was talking to Stewie originally in the summer, the plan was for my role to be a bit bigger. Um, obviously, with injuries and stuff, it's it's become a lot bigger. Like <laughs> playing twenty five minutes against Sheffield back to back nights. I don't think that was ever in the plan. But, uh, you know, it's, it's been a big opportunity. And I'm obviously I wish that Broller was here. I wish Thompson was healthy, but you know, I'm, I'm enjoying the playing time having said that. And how do you think you've grown as a player in that time? So, you know, sort of, if you think back to, to Johnny Curran, who turned up first day with the blaze to where you are now, what do you think there's sort of the differences between those two people? No, uh, I wouldn't say too much, to be honest. I think um, there's a certain level of confidence that's grown knowing you're going back out there. Um, my first year, I would say you only, I knew I was getting a certain amount of ice time and I think I'd probably made some riskier plays because you want to try to make a splash or you want to try to help. And when you're making bigger plays with only a couple shifts, it's mistakes are made. Now, when you know you're going out, a minute later or a minute and a half later, like you, you kind of live to fight another day, right? You don't mind getting the puck in deep or something and instead of trying to make a, a play at the line. So I, I think that's been a difference this year. Do you think that's potentially just um, not just with the increased minutes, but also increased experience, like knowing knowing that you've ha- you can fight again, you know, there is going to be another shift just down the line. Do you think there's as much experience as anything else? Oh yeah, absolutely. And I think, um, you know what, I probably got a little excited playing uh, under Stewie from college hockey because college hockey, it's either A or B, right? You're doing this or that and there's no other options and playing here, we have a lot of freedom. So maybe I uh, might have uh, hung myself with the rope first year. And I think uh, this year I'm, I'm doing a better job with it. Yeah. And that, you know, maybe speaks to the difference um, perhaps potentially between the teams as well. And I, I, this is a, a horrible question, but I'm going to ask it anyway. Um, but, you know, the, the, what do you think the main difference is between those two sides, so the 2019-20 Blaze and the and the Blaze that exists now on the ice? You know, I think, um, well, I'm sure everyone's going to have their opinions, but I think both teams have, uh, like, positives about them. I would say the, well, the 19-20 team was a way healthier team. Uh, they're, <laughs> they're, they're, coming, they're coming at you with uh, full strength. And, you know, what? if someone had an off night, then it, it seemed like someone always had a good night coming in. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. If Feds wasn't scoring, Bloods was getting two. If they weren't doing, Matty Polkamp was chipping in. Like, it was just, like, something. And now it seems like, uh, I think we, we battle really hard this, this year, this team. I think we play a, a, a better 200 foot game than we did in the previous years, but I think we're probably missing that running gun. Like it seemed like you get on the rush two years ago and we were scoring, 
now it's like we're we're cycling the puck and and you can't get a chance and it's it's just two different styles of offense i'd say Ed. yeah yeah that seems that seems fair to me um it was some of the uh, evan said actually um the other day was that if we were healthy we, we'd, we'd be one of the most dangerous teams in the league um that seems fair to me is it fair to you yeah i i think so um you know what, even with our healthy team, we still haven't, we, we didn't even sign a full roster, right? We came into the year short and import, but uh, Matt Thompson would have brought in a, a ton of different like diversity and Broler, the, the, sh- the sheriff around there keeps everyone at bay. Mm-hmm. And uh, yeah, I just think uh, with suspensions and injuries, the league really hasn't seen us at our best. And to, to I think a credit to us, we've won some big games with, with a depleted roster. Like we, we went into a, um, where is it with Cardiff with 12 forwards and no crowd win a game there yeah. beat Sheffield in Sheffield with 13 guys. Like we've, we've played some pretty good hockey considering we're uh, logging a lot of minutes individually. But in 2022, we've had some huge wins. Like the yeah. first game, like we didn't play for two weeks, right? I think it was on, was it January 9th? Something like that. I not played for two weeks. I haven't played since boxing day. Bomb Manchester at eight, three. I mean, what, what's the secret of having like no bodies and being able to roll teams like that? You know, yeah, it, and that's been a kind of a frustrating thing about this year too. Is uh, there obviously that game comes to mind, but uh, one that kind of sticks with us is uh, recently we went up to Dundee and just did everything right and yep. couldn't score. And and then on the bus we're like, we know we're scoring six or seven tomorrow, and we go and come home and score. Well, I think six. And it was yeah. like we we couldn't get one in the first or second period in, in Dundee, and then we're gonna come home and unload on someone. So I think some of those nights happen, but it would be nice if we could just maybe three or four every night instead of seven or eight once in a while. Yep. I was watching that Dundee game actually. Uh, and I oh. think I watched that do after the second period. I was like, I don't think you were watching it, were you to? <laughs> and I just kept you updated and I was like, Yeah, we dominated them in the first 20. I think we outshot them like 16 to five or something stupid, hit three posts, what are you gonna do? Second period, it was the same story. And then I was just like, uh, I've got a feeling one's going to go off a guy's shorts. We're going to be one nothing down. And then it's just going to be one of those nights. And sure enough, I think their goal was batted out of the air, wasn't it? Their first one. Was that the second yeah. one? Oh, yeah, it was, it was like a big scramble in front of the net. Like, a credit to them. Yeah. They, uh, they they took the pressure and then they end up putting one away. And that's just an example. But, like, yeah, when, yeah. You, when you compare um, the team two years ago, I think we might have been on the other end of it, had, like, 17 shots against – and we're going into we're going into the second with a three one lead somehow with like seven shots. So yeah. I just I think it's just it's just uh, like you said it's it's different offense. I think uh, we got to find some different ways to score, but the the effort's there for sure. Yeah, and and that that effort and that 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 uh, that tight knit team that we've got has that been one of the key things to overcome this adversity? And also, how how do you deal with it as a as an individual? Yeah, I think uh, I think that's just part of Coventry's recruiting. Though they they recruit good people first, and then obviously obviously they're gonna be good hockey players. But <laughs> the the person end is really high up there, and it, it shows in the room. You know, they're I think we've been put through enough this year for a team to break or start turning on each other, or get frustrated, and everyone's staying pretty level headed and staying positive. And I think that's been beneficial that we've we've gone into all our games level headed because some of these things this year are just so out of our control that it would, it would start to get to you. And I think we've handled it pretty well. Yeah. I think we've seen it in teams in the past. You've, you've had that team that breathes the regular season and then right towards the playoffs, get a couple of key injuries, maybe a suspension or two. And then all of a sudden it's like, well, we haven't really had any adversity this season. What do we do with this? Whereas yeah, if, exactly. you know, you're middle of the pack, managing to get some big wins, you know, maybe not taking as many points because of injuries and whatever, you know what it takes to get through it. Yeah, if you're healthy come playoff time, it's a whole different ballgame. Oh, exactly. Yeah. And I, I think when you've played hockey long enough, you've been on both ends of different teams. And like I could, yeah. I could think of a year in juniors, we lost. Um, I want to say like five games all year. We went like fifty and five, or like it was something ridiculous. And then blew through the first round, and then second round, we had like seven guys get hurt in four games, <laughs> like oh. like that. Like it was going to be like a national championship run, and then our whole team just collapsed, like in in a matter of like a week and a half. And it was like, oh my god, you work so hard, and then that happens in a matter of a week. So it's yeah, it it, it can happen to anyone, but yeah, we've had our fair share of uh, <laughs> problems this year. Yes, uh, they can run a book on it, Stu. Yeah. 
And, and Ed mentioned about how close it is in the in the table. Are you kind of aware? Do you look at the table and the standings or is it more of a, a sort of game by game? You just see who's coming up next and take it from there. Um, I, I probably say I'm a little bit nerdier than most guys. I, uh, I keep an eye on that and I'm, I'm riding my phone right away on the weekend after our games to see who beat each other and stuff. Um, so yeah, I, I, I keep an eye on that. And I think we're considering the up and downs we've had, we're in a great spot here. I think, uh, right now, I, we're like four games back on Nottingham and Guildford and we play them a bunch more and, I, th- I would say the top three teams are starting to run away with it big time, but that four to five uh, position in playoffs is going to be massive. So ev- everyone's going to want that one. Yeah, because that, that's a really a key spot, right? Because you get four, then obviously you miss one to three, but you also get the home, you know, potentially get the home leg second, you know, and if you're five, then again, you miss one to three as well. So that, that scrap there. And, and yeah. one of those other teams that you mentioned there um, in that mix is Guildford. And, um, you know, mm-hmm. you, you mentioned about, um, you know, earlier on with Knoxville and like selling seats and that. Right? having a rival is, is kind of good for business because, it, you know, yeah. there's, a, there's a lot going on. And the games this year between Guildford, both home and away, have been they've been close. They've been action packed. There's been OT, penalty shots, loads of incidents. You know, why do you think that there is that kind of rivalry between the two sides? Yeah, well, I, I think in a what is there 10 teams in a 10 team league by the end of the year who isn't a rivalry right like <laughs> when they're coming to the rink like oh these guys again when you when you play someone that many times but what is it um Guilford and Cardiff we play with the cup probably 10 times right yeah so you know what it's nothing personal I think it's they would feel the same way that you just get on each other's nerves after a while you just, <laughs> just see the same faces and the same and it's 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 an intense sport right so it gets the blood boiling and yeah, when you see the same guys every night, you get you get sick of them. <laughs> and when you know, you, you obviously you see the same faces, and you line up in the face-off circle, and you you know you see the same guys. You've moved about a bit in those positions though this year because you you've had a little bit of centre and a little bit of wing as well. Um, yeah. You you from what you know we've seen, you norm, normally play on the wing, but this year a little bit extra in the middle. So how have you coped with that? Do you do you have a preferred position? Or are you allowed to say what your preferred position is? <laughs> I was gonna say I, I probably Stewie's gonna be like this, but uh, I actually love playing center because it kind of gives you that freedom to just kind of chase the puck around a bit. Which wing you have to tend to come back to your position. But uh, having said that, playing with V, he's he's a really smart player, so he notices when I start to kind of chase the puck on the on the back check or something. He just fills in the lane, and suddenly we're in a good spot. But um, yeah, just with injuries, I you kind of just got to do what you're told and I'm not the only guy a lot of guys have been put in different spots right like Marshy's usually a, a winger V's usually a winger so guys are just kind of filling in where they can and uh like I said it's a kind of more adversity but the guys have handled it well and it, it's not as if we've just been short on the forward lines as well defensively there's been a, a few has um, Stewie ever tapped you on the shoulder and said do you know fancy <laughs> shift on the blue line is it <laughs> I, I think I've messed around with Keto at practice and showed him my backwards skating and my peel aways uh, after a pass and stuff, but it hasn't it hasn't impressed them enough to put me on the back end yet. Oh, well, mate, there, there's there's still time, I'm sure. Well, let, let's hope that never happens. I think we're. Gonna... <laughs> I was going to say, growing up, everyone wants to be a forward anyway, so you you, you got the golden ticket. Yeah, seeing the beatings that the defensemen take after every dump puck, I don't think I would have a, a very long career there. <laughs> and that's uh, and that's got easier considering they changed the icing rules not that long back. Yeah, oh yeah, they still like once in a while you see a hammer take a hit or some of these guys take a hit. Like, oh my god, like it's just it's a it's a tough position, but you know what they do it well, and I think it's our job as forwards to try to do it to their D. We probably could do a better job at that though. Ah, he said uh, coach have his fingers in his ears uh, a minute ago but uh, he just took him out for that <laughs> yeah yeah now you like that one yeah <laughs> oh Sign yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, that's toeing the company line right there I got gotcha. yeah yeah that's good you, you got a you got a gold star um yeah. John this has been a, a lot of fun man but I, I got I got to ask one thing to finish because yeah. you got to clear up a debate for us um oh, so me and Stu when we're in trouble particularly on on on, on game night on webcast uh, when someone says something stupid we go full name so we go Edward or Stuart. Yeah. Um, but obviously no one calls it Ed or Stu. On your birth certificate, are you yeah. Jonathan or are you John or are you Johnny? 
I, I am John. Yeah. Yeah. Just John. So just John. yeah. So I think back when I was younger, uh, the teachers would try to pull a Jonathan and I, no, nope, no, nope, it's yeah. John. <laughs> cool. See, we wanted to make sure we got that right. <laughs> well, you've met my uncle, right? That's come and visit with my dad. Uh, yeah, yeah. 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 So he, he, he's Mark. So I'm John Mark. So when I was in trouble back at home, it'd be a John Mark. Ah, there yeah. you go. I knew I was in trouble then. Yeah. Excellent. Well, I'm gonna I'm gonna store that one in the brain for uh, for next time you throw a bad turnover at the wall. Yeah, I was gonna say if I throw pizza, you can call me John Mark. Excellent. Excellent. <laughs> uh, honestly, though, John, this has been a lot of fun. Thank you so much for uh, for joining us. Oh yeah, and, time was, yeah. And try and stay it. on the healthy side of the roster, okay? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I will for sure. If you see me fishing for pucks, you know why. I'm not trying to get hurt out there. Fair enough. That, that makes sense to me. Um, guys, thank you so much. This has been a lot of fun. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, from everyone on Blaze TV and from Johnny. Take it easy. Stay safe out there and uh, hopefully see you at the Skydome soon.